Hi everybody, uh, Robert here with Odd Random Thoughts. A couple of videos ago we talked about uh, using R-Sync in NAS for free and I'm assuming this would work pretty much the same in free NAS, um, but using Delta Copy Server on your Windows machine in order to uh, sync backups to your NAS for free or your free NAS server. In this video we're going to be using NAS for free because that's what I have set up here at home. But let's go ahead and, and get started taking a look at that and I'll walk you through how to do it. It's real easy to set up. So let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download uh, the Delta Copy server. We can take a look here at the screenshot here. And if you just go to Google and search for Delta Copy server, the first link that pops up is going to be the one you're going to want to go to. So we'll just click on that link and here it uh, gives you all the documentation everything like that on the uh, program goes over how to set it up and all that kind of stuff you can read this documentation It'll probably be pretty helpful we're gonna walk through all the steps on how to set this up what you would want to do is click on uh, the download links over here on the right and then just click on with installer and that will open up a dialog to save the Delta copy files uh, it'll be in a zip format. You'll just want to download that file, unzip it, and then run the executable. Once you have gotten that installed, you'll then have a Delta Copy client and a Delta Copy server in your programs. Now, the one that we want to use, uh, it all depends on which direction you're wanting to back up the files. If you're wanting to back up files from your Windows machine to your NAS for free server, which is pretty much what this video is about, then your Windows machine is going to act as the server because it's going to be serving the files to the NAS. So you would click on the Delta Copy server and uh, it's going to require admin permission. So just on the UAC, click through and then you'll get a program like this. Now, when it runs for the first time, it's going to ask you to enable the service. So just go ahead and click yes to enable the service and then your this window will pop up. Here, uh, this will be stopped. You'll have a red light here when you first start your server. But what you want to do is go to your virtual directories and uh, there'll be one there by default. You can just right click on it and delete the directory that's in there. Uh, and then to add a new directory, just double click where it says add new directory and we'll just call this one test. Now remember this name because whatever you name these directories or whatever you name these uh, list virtual directories is that same name you're going to need uh, when you get ready to configure NAS for free. And we'll go over that in, in just a few minutes, but uh, go ahead and click OK. And then you want to highlight the virtual directory you just uh, created. And then you'll browse for a path to the folder that, that uh, contains all the documents that you want to back up. So uh, let's say we wanted to back up our iTunes directory and our music we would just uh, go to that and select it and then hit OK and that's going to put uh, anything that's within the iTunes directory is going to be backed up. Now this will get uh, all the subfolders and it's recursive so everything within that directory out is going to be backed up. Now you can leave a comment if you wish uh, if you have set up authentication on your NAS for free server in rsync, you can put that information here. Uh, this being on my local network, I don't have authentication set up. My NAS for free server is not available outside of my internal LAN. So I, uh, all you have to do basically from there is just uh, hit close. I've found this is the best way to do it to make sure everything sticks. Uh, then we can go back and open it up again and if you go back you see your your directory is saved there now uh, remember I, you need to take note of the virtual directory name because you'll need that in setting up NAS for free 
So once you get all of your directories added, uh, you can close that out and that's pretty much the end of, of what you need to set up on your, your Windows machine. Uh, so next we'll, we'll take a look at NAS for free and the configuration there and I'll show you how to set all that up. So let's, let's go and take a look at the server. All right, so we're back. Sorry about that. I had to take a break and go get me a cup of coffee. Okay, I just heard a, a beep there in the network closet. I guess that means the uh, NAS for free server is up and ready to log in. So let's go ahead and log in and we'll take a look at the configuration for setting up the rsync side of this. Okay, so here we are. Um, I've logged into the NAS for free server and I would like to mention, uh, sorry about the, the jittery uh, screen capture earlier. I'm not sure what was going on, but uh, I believe I got everything straightened out now. So now that we're logged in, um, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a directory um, area that we're going to save our backups in on the NAS for free server. And a lot of people uh, prefer to do this through the terminal. But uh, since this is a tutorial, we're going to go about it a little bit easier way. Um, we're going to go up here to advanced and go to file manager. Okay, and then once we're in the file manager, uh, all of your directories will be under the mount area. If you've set this up, you'll have your pool uh, set up already, and then you'll have your shared directories and all that within the pool. So we'll go into our main pool, and on mine, uh, I created a folder here called backups, and within that, uh, I have Drobo. Now you can create whatever directories you want. If you just want to create a backup folder, then inside that folder that's where you can create uh, your others uh, it's just really up to you but within my Drobo that's where I have my photos profiles and storage and what I like to do is I like to coincide the folder names with the same name of the uh, listed directory that I put into a uh, Delta copy server um, makes it a little easier to uh, know what directories I'm working with. So what I'm going to do, since we created a test uh, directory, I'm going to come over here and select directory here, and I'm just going to put in test and create. So that created our test directory. Now, if you notice the permissions, I have all these set at 777. So if you click on the permissions, you can come in here and give write access to public as well and just hit change and then that will change uh, the permissions to match the rest of uh, the directories here so now that we've created our directory where we're going to put the files we're backing up we'll go up here to services and then go to rsync now you want to be sure that uh, rsync is enabled here and then go to client because if you remember uh, the Windows machine is acting as the server, so we're going to serve those files to the client, which is the NAS. So we're going to configure the client area. And then over here, we'll create the plus to add an rsync job. And then up here, this is going to be the destination where the files will be saved. So we'll click here, and then we'll just navigate. Uh, that was in backups, Drobo, and then there's our test directory that we just created. So we'll click on that and then hit OK. So this is uh, the folder that uh, the backup for the test profile that we put in Delta Copy Server will be saved. Uh, the remote rsync server is going to be the IP of the Windows machine that you're backing up from. So this one is 10.10.10.101. Now here is where you will put that name that I told you to be sure and remember because the remote module source is going to be the name of the directory you added in Delta Copy Server. So here we'll put test. And if you notice, all these names coincide with each other. Uh, the folder in the NAS, uh, the, the folder directory that we created in the Delta Copy, and the remote module. 
uh, and we will leave this on who's going to run the job. It's going to be ran by root. Now here, you can select uh, this to run on a schedule. Uh, this will be put in as a cron job. Um, like some of them I prefer to run at 1.30 in the morning. So um, minutes, you would select 30 for 30 minutes. One hour, so that's one hour and 30 minutes. And if you want to select, if you want it to run on every day of the week, every day of the month, you would select all. If you only want it to run on specific days, you could uh, pick, say, the 15th of each month. And then since you picked a specific day, you would pick all months and all weekdays. Um, if you wanted it to run on all days, every day of the week, you can hold control and click on that day again and it'll deselect. Uh, so you can click all. If you wanted it to run every month, leave that on all, uh, all days of the week. Uh, if you wanted it to only run, say, on certain months, like every other month, you can hold control and select which months you want that to run on. Uh, and that would be, uh, that would mean that every day of the week throughout the month of these months selected, this job would run at 1.30 a.m. So you kind of see how that works. Um, then down here, we're going to tell it to recurse into directories. That way it gets all subdirectories and files. And then we will uh, preserve modification times and compress the file. Always compress if you can. Uh, we'll also tell it to delete files on the receiving side that don't exist on the sender. So if I delete a file from my Windows machine, when this syncs, it's going to delete that file off of the NAS as well. Now if you don't want it to do that, if you want to keep backup copies to where you could restore from it, then you don't want to check this. But if you are using this option, just leave uh, the algorithm to default. That'll, that will work fine. Uh, and we'll tell it to suppress non-error messages uh, just to help with the log files. Now here is a problem a lot of people run into with rsync is that once they've transferred the files over uh, in their backup, if they try to say FTPN or through a network uh, networked folder or something into the directory of the backup, they're unable, they don't have the right permissions to go into the folders or to execute a file. There's a command you can put down here in extra options, uh, and it's uh, two hyphens and then a chi mod. So we're going we're gonna to modify the uh, permissions, and it's going to be equal to user group owner, and that will be equal to read, write, and capital X, execute. So this will change the permissions for every file transferred over during the backup to read, write, and execute for all three, the user group and owner, just like we set for the test folder. That way you won't have any problem accessing any of those files, whether you're connecting FTP, if you have a uh, network location that you've added in Windows that leads to the server, whatever the case may be, these will have full read, write, and execute uh, permissions. So after that, uh, just click Add, and then you'll apply the changes. Okay, so now we have this job set up. So what it's going to do on my machine here, you can see uh, this iTunes directory is the directory that we set up in Delta Copy Server to sync. So let's see if it works. Another thing that I like about this is that you can run on demand any of these uh, rsync schedules you've set up by clicking down here to execute now. Uh, you can do that to test it or to run an initial backup and then let the schedule take over from there or you can not schedule it at all and just let it uh, only run when you, you go here to execute, which is what I do because I only turn my server on maybe once a month and back up from my uh, 
machine to the NAS so I have a third backup always on file of, of all of my documents and stuff. So let's click Execute and it'll take it just a second to run. Don't do, You won't want to click on anything while this is running if you're doing it manually and it'll take it just a minute. You can see up here at the top the little circle turning. Okay, so uh, it says here the changes have been applied successfully so that means that it is through running. Uh, let's go up here to Diagnostics and click on Log, and then we will come up here and pick rsync client as our view. And as you can see, all these files it's talking about here were synced during that job. So let's go up here to our file manager, and we'll navigate back to that directory re that we created, which is under Drobo, and it's this test directory. So now, if we look in the test directory, we see all of those files that were shown here have transferred over. So we have everything sent from our Windows machine to our NAS server. And uh, like I said, if you set that on a schedule, it will run on that schedule. Uh, I have never had them fail. It's uh, very reliable. Under your settings, you can tell this to do a reverse direction. So if you're wanting to restore files, uh, you can just check this option here, save it, and then go back in and execute it, and it will send from the NAS to the server, which would be your Windows machine. So it'll go client to server instead of server to client. Uh, but keep in mind that will restore everything in that directory. So if you're only wanting to do specific files, you might create a separate directory just for that and move the files there or send them to a different, uh, a different remote module into an, uh, an empty folder where you can just uh, sift through and get what you want. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe. If this has helped you out, give me a thumbs up. It's down, down there somewhere. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.